Hi, thanks for checking this video out. I'll be showing you a technique for dynamically combining multiple sheets that are contained in the same spreadsheet. There are many ways to do this in Google Sheets. Some involve using the built-in array handling sheet supports, combined with using the powerful query function. I use the query function regularly across many of my projects. And I've also used the query array approach as well to dynamically combine multiple sheets. The formulas I'll be showing are alternative approaches to the query function. It's not important that you understand the formulas to be able to implement this approach in your projects. The approach I'm showing relies on determining the active last row in a spreadsheet, uh, dynamically, of course. I found this formula searching the internet and I'm using it in many of my projects totally unrelated to combining sheets. So this is a very useful formula to keep in your toolbox. I have shared the sheet, uh, completed sheet, with the formulas I'll be building during this tutorial below as view only. You can feel free to make your own copy and post comments or questions. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's say you have a spreadsheet with sheets for sales representatives organized by teams and you like to see like to have a sheet that combines all the individual sheets dynamically. So here we got team one and team two. So what this means is that um, as you update the individual sheets, the combined sheet will also reflect those um, updates. For simplicity purposes, we'll just work with two sheets, but you can have as many as you like. All right, so I'll go ahead and add a sheet now to combine the two sheets. So let's go ahead and create a new sheet, and um, let's call this one Combined One. And um, the formula we'll be using is, uh, I'll post that here as text and then we'll put the actual formula in so you can see the results. So we'll go ahead and let me just stick that right here. I start with a single quote to make this formula um, a label instead of an actual formula. So the curly brackets is uh, the way Google does arrays and we're referencing sheets team one cells A1 through B and team two cells A through B by leaving off the second uh, numeric parameter of the column B in each case, we're telling Google Sheets, I want you to go as far down as possible. And let's go ahead and enter that formula now right in A1. And there we go. But notice the gap between the data from Sheet 1 and Sheet 2. I deliberately kept the two team sheet rows limited so the gap is more obvious. When you start a new sheet, uh, Google typically starts with um, a thousand rows. If this data was on those kind of sheets with that many rows, when you combine them, you would see the first sheet's data and likely think the formula did not work as the second sheet's data would be way out of view starting at about row 1001. Watch what happens if I add rows to the quarter one sheet, um, not team one sheet, sorry. I'll just add a thousand. And I will go back and combined and you're like, oh, where's, where's my team two? <laughs> well, it's down there. <laughs> we just have to go way down to find it. In this case, 1019. Alrighty, so let's go back up and go back to team one and get rid of those rows. Just hit undo, back to combine, and we're back to the gap as well. So this may not be an issue. You may, uh, your project may not be concerned about the gaps. Maybe you'll filter them out in your reports. And there's so many different ways that we can filter. Uh, there's the filter function, there's pivot tables, there's a query function, and um, there's a uh, the filter menu command and I think there's probably a few other ways as well typically in Google there's multiple ways um, to uh, to do that so let's just uh, quickly uh, show you how we might accomplish that with the uh, filter function and I'll just enter that um, let's say here in uh, cell F2 
and the filter function basically um, is saying as long as it's not empty we'll take a2 to b24 well b24 we should just say to b and same thing for that side and now we get all of them and as that expands it would also just combine so that's just one way um, but let's go ahead and um, make the assumption that you don't want those gaps that's the purpose uh, one of the main features of this uh, tutorial is to show you how to dynamically calculate the last uh, row of, of, a, of a spreadsheet so um, there's many approaches to determine the last active row as well if you do some um, uh, searching you'll see many different approaches um, some are more efficient and more intuitive than others I'm going to go ahead and make a, a, a new sheet now and we're going to call this um, last active row Alrighty. And I'm going to just copy some um, data from Team 1 here. And just paste that over here. So we just have some data to work with. I'm not worried about the sales numbers. I just want some uh, data in a, in a column so that we can figure out the last active row. Alrighty. So um, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to paste the formula so that you can see it as a label once again same way we did it before and then we will um, break this formula down into its components a little at a time because uh, it is a, a little bit um, complicated to say the least I had to stare at it for a little while let's insert a row put the sales rep heading here and I'll just paste this formula um, in column E so that oops as a label I forgot the single quote all right so that's the formula we'll be entering it's using also the array formula built into Google Sheets along with Max and the row function so let's break it down. I always uh, like the onion approach. So we have a complicated formula. You might want to break it down to its components, and you can always put it back together um, as as needed. So um, let's start with the insides, and here we're uh, comparing um, the cell to uh, if it's empty. A two through A is not equal. To an empty string so let's just put that up here as a label a2 does not equal that I'm going to make these all bold I'm going to be adding um, uh, another one as well so just get that all bold and let's break this column a little bit bigger okay so when I went to the formula equals this does not equal empty string and we could copy that down and that returns true or false um, so if one is empty it should return false all right so now we want to um, take the row of the cell reference by uh, the cells in column A row is a fairly simple function it just returns the row so we'll just put that as a label as well and we'll put that in here as a formula and auto fill down nothing no rocket science there let's make this uh, center so it looks nice and we'll make this right aligned so it lines up over the numbers 
All right, now this formula takes the max. I think most of us are familiar with the max and minimum. Max will take, you know, return the maximum value of um, the, the arguments. And what we're doing here is taking the true, this formula here, A does not equal empty string, and multiplying it by the row number. Now, you might scratch your head and say, well, um, how can we do that? Because logical is not quite the same as, as a number. And that's true, except that logicals um, kind of can be treated as numbers, where um, true is, is a 1 and a false is a 0. So let's put this formula here. And this will be as a label again. So we'll just do um, B2 times C2 with the equal sign. Put that back in. And now over the actual formula. And autofill. All right. So now if one is blank, we should get a zero false is treated as a zero. Five times zero, any number times zero returns zero. All right, so um, at this point now, um, we got all the components of the formula that we'll need. So we could um, copy this formula that we entered as a label and paste it right down here. and we get the number 8. So active rows is 8. If we add some more, notice by the way it skips, it accounts for, for the blanks as well. Alright, so um, let's go ahead and add one. Blake. And it changes to 9. Okay. Um, Alrighty, so this formula to calculate the dynamic last row is, like I said before, useful for many projects. However, in my mind, it's not really super intuitive um, and easy to remember, for sure. <laughs> so I decided to add this uh, function or formula, I'm sorry, into my own name function library that I've been uh, building. And if you have not experimented with the name functions, which was introduced in August of 2022. I highly recommend you do. I did an in-depth deep dive tutorial for name functions. The link is also going to be below. Name functions let you save and name your own custom formulas built with regular sheets functions, unlike using uh, custom functions using app script. So one of the main benefits of name functions is to be able to simplify the usage of complex formulas such as this one. I'll go ahead and make a name function um, for this. I'm not going to go into detail explaining all the steps. Uh, again, this is um, covered in uh, many other tutorials, including the one that I wrote before. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Um, so we start off by um, going to the data menu and then name functions and if it's the first time you'll see this if not um, you'll see the list of the name functions you have so we'll go ahead and create one just choose add new function and uh, you get to call it any name you want um, I'm going to call this one get last row and the description is optional. I highly recommend you always use them. And then we're going to take one argument in this case, uh, which is going to be the range, and that's going to take care of our A uh, reference to column um, A2 through A. And we can call this anything we want. I'm going to just call it range, and we press enter. And now comes the definition. So the definition is going to be, for the most part, this formula right here. So I'll just copy that without the quote. And paste that in there. And wherever it references A2 through A, 
we change it to range. And now we can go on to the next screen. And we can give a uh, description um, for the argument. Again, optional. I would highly recommend doing it. It will show as just like any other function as you start typing in as like a little helper. So might as well make it uh, easy to use and intuitive. And you put a little example uh, of the argument. So I'll just write in A1 through A. It could be anything you want. It could even be, you know, some text if you like. And we'll go to choose create. All right. So now we have a name function called get last row. And I'm going to paste the formula as a label that we're going to use, just like we've done on the other ones, right up here on top. Let's make this column a little bit bigger. And now we can type equals get last row, and there it is. And uh, there's the explanation of what it does and um, the definition. And it shows the argument. Or if you had more, you can have multiple arguments and name functions. As I don't believe there's a limit, along with a little description. So um, we'll go ahead and put in that range, A1 um, through A. And we get the same number, 9 and 9. However, most people probably can type that in easily, knowing that they have um, uh, this name function, and without having to type in or try to remember the array form of the max and the row and all the combination and worse is all those parentheses. Um, they're horrible. I'm always making mistakes and having to fix my parentheses. So that's a little bit on name functions. Um, in the video that I showed you, I, there's an entire library of, uh, I don't know, 20, 25 name functions I started with. So some hopefully might be useful for you. Uh, this one, uh, I believe, is in that one as well. <laughs> Get last row. All right, so let's go continue on. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a formula now that uses uh, that new um, formula, the get uh, the name function formula, get last row. Um, and we'll make a new sheet for that. So let's go ahead and call this one combine two. Alrighty. Um, so uh, let's um, get some data. I guess we can get some data from um, last active row. Uh, well, let's actually we don't need the data. We're going to be combining it here, so we'll be just um, putting the data right in. So let's start with um, the formula that we've. Um, uh, we'll be using, uh, we'll build it kind of on the side, and then we'll get all the data. So uh, let's say in um, cell E4, uh, let's go to F4. We'll put in the standard formula. So that's that one. just have to make the small change uh, to reference the the um, sheet so instead of in front of a2 we'll just put in team one and same thing over here all right so we get the same number that we got over here oh Oh, yeah, because this is referencing this data, um, but it would be eight, right? Yeah, eight rows. All right, um, so we'll just put a little hand heading there, standard formula, in 
and then we'll use the same thing doing the name function, which is so much nicer. And we could just type in uh, equals get last row, and then team one a two through a, and we should get. Oops, made a mistake because I misspelled team. We'll just fix that. There we go. Same thing. Now let's make them both right. Run bold. And this will be team one last row. And let's do bold for that as well. And open this up a little bit. And same with this one. And we're going to copy those headings um, a couple rows down for team two. Actually, let's move it one more down because I want to put here um, the string that we're going to show here and then we'll be incorporating it into the formula directly. directly. So we'll call that team one string and we're going to be using this handy function called indirect. I'll make that bold as well. Let's make this column a little bit bigger. And we'll use those same descriptions other than changing team one to team two. Now, um, we can copy this here, and all we have to do is change Team 1 to Team 2. That's also 8. Let's make Team 2 so it's not 8. Um, let's put Blake here. Uh, this I don't know. 24,000. Why not? Alright, so now that's 9, so you know it's working. It's not just um, cheating or doing anything like that. And the name function will be the same as this. The only difference is uh, team 1 becomes team 2. Alrighty, perfect. All right, so the indirect function is um, comes in handy for lots of different things. It basically returns uh, a reference to the cell um, argument of the function itself. So we do that um, using some uh, string concatenation. So uh, in Google Sheets, they use the ampersand to concatenate strings. Optionally, you can also use a function called concat, uh, which is pretty much the equivalent to the ampersand as well. So we'll go ahead and build this formula here. And it's going to be um, uh, to build the string equals around quotes now because of string building team one. and the reference is going to be A1 through B, and then we close quote, and now we want to combine that with the dynamic last row we calculate above, so we'll use the ampersand and reference F4. So basically all we did there is built a string. That's all it is. It's a string combining this string here along with F4. You can have as many when you're combining strings or concatenating strings, you can concatenate uh, as much as you like. All right, so we'll go ahead and do the same thing um, for uh, this formula. So that will be equals and then quotes team two, um, exclamation point, A1. Actually, this one uh, will want to be A2. 
since we don't really want to repeat the headings. So we'll have A2 through B, close the quote, and then combine F8. So ampersand F8. And we just made another string dynamically using the uh, str building a function, uh, using the function of uh, get last row, as well as combining uh, strings of the number we calculated in the string. Now, this is what we can use for the indirect function. All right, so um, just to give you a little idea of how this works, let's just drop it down here and then we'll build a complete one over here. We'll do this just for team one. For now, just so you get a general idea of how the indirect function works. So indirect and then the cell reference. In this case, we can reference directly um, cell F4. And then uh, close parenthesis. And there's our data. So again, indirect. You can, if you haven't used it before, you can read up all about it. But it returns a cell reference specified by that string. And it even shows you in the example uh, using some concatenation, B10, B, quote, ampersand 10. In our case, we're calculating the number dynamically uh, with the um, standard formula or the name function, whichever you prefer. If you wanted more information, you just click Learn More, and then you would see all different examples. Okay, but that's out of the scope of this. Again, you don't need to fully understand uh, indirect to use this. Um, but um, at some point you may want to kind of get more familiar with it. Um, it could be useful for um, many different things. All right, so we can skip the helper cells that we built there, of course, uh, and by, instead of referencing F5, we can put everything that went into F5 right in the indirect fun formula directly. So we would, um, enter um, the quotes and then team one a one through uh, B and then combine that with um, the value in F4 or we can put the contents of F4 directly in here as well so Let's do it first way that way. We should get the same result. And then the next time we can do it, I'm gonna use the name function. Get last row. And this will be uh, team one, A2 through A1 through A. Actually, A2 would work as well. And I think we need one more parenthesis. And now we're not using the help of cells at all. So we could actually delete these and it wouldn't make a difference. All right, so that's just showing how to do it with the one. Now let's put both um, team one and team two together uh, without any gaps. We'll start by just using this formula we wrote here. And we'll surround it with curly brackets to build the array. And if we just did that, we're still going to just get team one. And now what we can do is add team two. So um, right at this point here, we'll put a, um, a semicolon. A semicolon is how you would um, combine um, it has to be exact same dimensions of data together. So um, we'll put that semicolon right here. And I'm going to copy this data here because uh, otherwise I'll make lots of mistakes. And it's just easier to copy and make changes. And in this case, we just change T1 to T2, A1, A2, so we'd 
do well let's leave a1 so you see what I'm do talking about and then because I forgot it first as well and I'm like oops let's fix that so we'll change that to a2 for last row it could start at a1 it could start pretty much at any row that's got data in it um, and we'll press enter and that's what I meant by um, repeating the column headings we don't want that so we just come back here and we'll start by going to A2. And that's it. If we want, I'll make some bold. We can move this over to flush right to follow to be able to numbers. So basically now, um, with this formula here, we've combined two sheets and eliminated any gaps dynamically. So now, if I came back to say team two we had Blake already didn't we no we didn't have Blake on team one all right so let's add um, uh, let's add uh, Kevin and 21,000 I don't know back to combine two and we should see Kevin now in the list there you go there he is 21,000 let's go to team two and and uh, Mary, Mary's a really good salesman, salesperson, so she did 45000 And we look at combined two, and there it is. And of course, if the numbers change, well, they'll be updated on the other sheet as well. And there it is. All right, very cool indeed. All righty. So, um... That's pretty much a wrap for this uh, video, and I want to thank you for watching. I hope you learned something today, and again, feel free to comment and ask questions below.